We've been looking at ways of storing and manipulating data, and we first looked at the single inverter with its output connected up to its input. This circuit's a stable, where it spontaneously <laughs> oscillates between two states. Technically, this is an example of a race around condition or hazard condition. Race around conditions lead to unpredictable and frankly undesirable logic conditions. It's caused by this feedback loop which is constantly changing the output. We want to store information, so we need to add a second inverter where the output of each inverter is connected to the input of the other inverter. That's much better. This configuration has two stable states, 0110 and 1001. The circuit will stay in one of these conditions indefinitely. Well, at least as long as power is applied to the circuit. But we need to add in another couple of gates to let us change between these two configurations. This is called a set reset latch or SR latch. Now, this is a significant improvement, but the SR latch itself can still be susceptible to undesired feedback and race conditions. For example, if I connect the Q output to the reset input and the Q bar output to the set input, I've made this circuit with relays, and let's see what happens. Let's see if we can figure out what will happen from first principles. If we happen to be in the 0-1 configuration, these outputs feed back into the inputs of the OR gates, and at least one input of each OR gate will be 1. This forces the output of both OR gates to be 1, the output from the inverters will be 0. This feeds back to the OR gates, they'll both output zeros, which forces the inverters to output 1. Then, this cycle just repeats. Now you might be thinking, that's an obscure example. But first, in complex digital systems, the path from output to input can be hidden in a cloud of logic and difficult to find. Second, this example, where the Q output goes to reset and the Q bar output goes to set, can be used as the basis for an upcounter, so we want our circuit to be able to handle it. Now, to be useful, we need to figure out a way of stopping this from happening for both the digital clock and for the control circuitry inside the CPU. The first thing I'm going to do is change how we draw the circuit with an OR gate followed by an inverter. Let's look at the truth table for this gate. If both inputs are 0, then the output's 1. But if either or both inputs are a 1, then the output's a 0. Remember our mystery 2 input gate, which had 16 possible truth tables associated with it? Well, this is one of those truth tables, and it's called the NOR gate, which means it's the NOT OR gate. We draw it as a regular OR gate with a little circle on the output, which signifies that it's an OR gate with an inverted output. Now we can draw our SR latch this way. Note that I have the output Q, and I've labelled the other output as Q with a little bar over the top. This is another way of showing that a signal is inverted, and we call it Q bar. In normal operation, Q bar is the inverse of Q. Functionally, it's the equivalent of having an inverter between Q and Q bar. While I'm at it, I might make a few more changes to how we do things. For the relay circuits, I'm going to stop drawing the connections to the battery. When I want to wire going to the 12 volt terminal, I'll just write 12 volts next to the signal. Similarly, when I want to connect it to the 0 volt terminal of the battery, I'll just write 0 volts. This is getting closer to how we actually draw circuits. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add in a barrier which controls when we can assert, set and reset. The way I do this is with a pair of AND gates, where one input of each AND gate is tied to an enable signal. When enable is low, then asserting set won't get through to the latch. It's as though there's a barrier or closed door stopping set getting in. Similarly, reset can't get through either. But when enable's high, it's as though the door's open, which means both set and reset can get through. Now, we don't ever actually want both set and reset to be high at the same time, but we'll deal with that a bit later. I can build this with relays. I've added in another relay which is controlled by the enable signal, 
And remember that relays actually have two switches internally that are electrically independent, but are physically connected so that they open and close at the same time. Let's say the SR latch is in this configuration where the Q output is in the disconnected state. When enabled zero, even if sets one, the signal can't get through to the SR latch and the latch stays in its previous configuration. But when enables one, both set and reset signals can get through. And if set happens to be one, the set signal energizes the relay on the left. This cuts the power to the relay on the right, which turns off. This now generates a second pathway for 12 volts to get to the relay coil on the left. Next, when enables deasserted, the set signal can't get through, but power is maintained to the left relay coil and this circuit will stay in this state. I'll leave the reset pathways an exercise for you to do at home. I've built this with three relays in this circuit. I'm going to connect Q bar to set and Q to reset, which causes our race condition. This push button is connected to the enable signal. When I press enable, we get the racing. But when I release enable, the SR latch will settle into one of the two configurations and stay that way until I press enable again. So at least I've eliminated the race condition when enable is low. That's good, but I really need to completely eliminate this race condition to make the circuit usable. I'm going to change tack here and make an analogy. The Martian is my second favourite movie of the 2010s after the imitation game. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it yet, but even if you haven't, you should be able to understand the analogy. Let's concentrate on what happens in this scene. Pressure stable. Let's go over it one step at a time. We have the Martian surface, which is hostile to human life. We have the HAB, which is man-made, so it's pressurised and contains oxygen. Now, this is the important bit. We have an airlock which helps us transfer between the two. It has two doors, one from the Martian surface and the other going into the HAB. Now we need a new rule. We can never have both doors open at once. If we do, the hab will depressurize and it'll kill everyone inside. So we have two doors, both are closed, and our astronauts outside. We depressurize the airlock and open door one, keeping door two closed. The astronaut moves from the Martian surface into the airlock and closes door one. Next, we pressurize the airlock, and once the pressure is equalized across door two, we open it, keeping door one closed. Our astronaut then moves from the airlock into the hab, and we close door two. Now both doors are closed again, and no one dies. Let's go back to this SR latch, which is called a gated SR latch, because the AND gates act like a barrier to letting the set and reset signals through. But we can still get a race around condition when enables asserted. What I'm going to do now is put two of these gated SR latches together with the outputs from the first one directly feed into the inputs of the second one. Now, overall, we have four inputs, set, reset, and the two enable signals. And now I have these two barriers, or doors, controlled by the enable signals, and the space in between acts a bit like a digital airlock. Outside on the left, door, digital airlock, door, and inside on the right. Now, we're going to need a new rule. Never assert both enables at the same time. Let's say set's asserted, but enable 1 is 0. This means the set signal doesn't get past the end gate. Next, let's assert enable 1. This opens door 1, and the data flows into our digital airlock and gets stored in the left SR latch. It's presented on our internal Q and internal Q bar signals, which become our internal set and internal reset signals. Now we close door 1 by deasserting enable 1, and the data is safe and sound in our digital airlock. Next, we assert enable 2 and open door 2. 
The data flows into our second SR latch on the right and presented on the outputs Q and Q bar. Finally, we close door 2 and the circuit's ready to go again. Now, provided we don't open both doors at once, we can have our outputs feed back to our inputs and we don't get a race around condition. The set and reset signals have to go through our digital airlock, which prevents the inputs from immediately affecting the outputs and stops the formation of a rapid feedback loop required for the race condition. We're not quite there yet. There's still quite a bit of work before we have a robust unit. We still have an undecided state if set and reset are both high at the same time, and we still have the potential for a race condition if both enables are high at the same time. We'll look into this a bit deeper in the next video. Remember this analogy when you want to think about how flip-flops work. But for now, don't forget to like, share and subscribe.